Hello friends, and welcome back to our channel. Today, we are going to take a look at the trial of John Willard. John Willard was first accused of practicing witchcraft on Sunday, April 24, 1692, by Ann Putnam Jr. after she told her family and those who were visiting that Willard had afflicted her. Word of her accusation spread throughout Salem, and on April 25th, John went to the Putnam home to confront Ann. Anne told him that he had hurt her. However, John denied it. She told him that if he left her alone, she wouldn't complain to the court about him. On May 4th, John Willard was in Boston for election day with his father-in-law Barry Wilkins and his brother-in-law Henry Wilkins. While attending lunch together, Barry claimed John had given him an evil eye and shortly after, he was struck ill with urinary problems. After several days of illness, he returned to his home in Salem to find his grandson Daniel very sick. On May 10th, magistrates John Hathorne and Jonathan Corwin issued an arrest warrant for John Willard. After Ann Putnam Jr. claimed he had beaten pinched and almost choked her to death, the constables went to his home but could not find him and told the court he had fled. On May 16th, Daniel Wilkins passed away from an unknown illness. His family suspected he had been bewitched to death by John Willard and asked that the jury of inquest examine Daniel's body. A group of twelve men were sent to view the body on May 17th. They reported that the body was bruised and the skin was broken in several places. It was their judgment that Daniel had died of unnatural cause and by the hands of witchcraft. Meanwhile, John Willard was found in Lancaster on the 16th and was arrested on the charge of practicing witchcraft. He was brought to Beadle's Tavern to await questioning. On May 18th, John Willard was questioned by magistrates John Hathorne and Jonathan Corwin. The warrant was read, and as Willard looked upon the afflicted, they all fell into fits. Here is a return of the warrant that you fled from the authority. That is an acknowledgment of guilt, but notwithstanding this, we require you to confess the truth in this matter. I shall as I hope. I shall be assisted by the Lord of Heaven and for my going away, I was afraid and thought that my withdrawing might be better. I fear not, but the Lord in his due time will make me as white as snow. Why do you hurt them? Is it you or your appearance? I know nothing of appearance. Hathorne asked the afflicted if this man had hurt them, and several said yes. They charge you, it is you or your appearance. I know nothing of appearance, and the God of heaven will clear me. Well, they charge you not only with this but with dreadful murders, and I doubt not if you be guilty, God will not suffer evidence to be wanting. Elizabeth Hubbard testified against him, and when he looked at her she fell into a fit. If you desire mercy from God, then confess and give glory to God. As for sins I am guilty of, if the minister asked me, I am ready to confess. If you have revolted from God, you are a dreadful sinner. Mary Warren cried out, Oh! He bites me! Open your mouth, do not bite your lips. Anne Putnam's testimony was read. Do you hear this evidence read? Yes, I do hear it. What do you say to this murdering and bewitching? Susan Sheldon cried out, There is a black man whispering in his ear. What do you say to this? I heard nothing nor see anything. The afflicted testified that the people he had murdered were now around him. Do you think these are bewitched? Yes, I really believe it. Well, others they have accused were found to be guilty persons. Why should it be false in you? If you can find it in your heart to confess, it is possible you may obtain mercy. I cannot confess that which I do not know. Well, but if these things are true, heaven and earth will rise up against you. I am as innocent as the child that is now to be born. Can you pray the Lord's Prayer? Yes. Let us hear you. John tried to recite the Lord's Prayer but could not put the words together. It is a strange thing. I can say it at another time. I think I am bewitched as well as they. Do you not see God will not suffer you to pray to Him? It is a strange thing. No, it is no strange thing that God will not suffer a wizard to pray to Him. Confess. Have you never wished harm to your neighbors? No, never in my life. Well confess and give glory to God, take counsel while it is offered. I desire to take good counsel, but if it was the last time I was to speak, 
I am innocent. The court did not agree that he was an innocent man. They held him in jail for tormenting Mercy Lewis, Ann Putnam Jr., Susanna Sheldon, Abigail Williams, and Elizabeth Hubbard. On August 19, 1692, John Willard was brought from jail to Proctor's Ledge and hanged in front of a crowd of onlookers. Until next time, friends, remember history teaches us valuable lessons, and it's up to us to listen and learn from them. This video was produced by 1692 Before and After. In memory of those falsely accused and persecuted during the Salem witch trials, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. For more information about the Salem witch trials, visit our website at 1692beforeandafter.com.